Good morning, everybody, and welcome to worship with the First Presbyterian Church of Evanston. Wherever you may be in the world, we are glad that you are with us worshiping this day that the Lord has made. Welcome. If this is your first time with us, we invite you to text the word welcome to 847-565-2772 to learn more about our church, First Presbyterian Church of Evanston, as we journey together in knowing Christ, growing in him, and serving him by making disciples here in the community and around the world. Welcome. One other thing, we would really like it if everybody, and I do mean everybody, filled out the connection card that you can find on the website that you were watching this service on. By filling out that connection card, we get a sense of who is here worshiping with us online. And we also get a sense of what's going on in your life. Please take time to fill that card out and comment on it. Anything you would like us to know from prayer concerns or prayer praises, whatever it might be please take the time to fill out that connection card. This is a real benefit to us. So thank you, everyone, for filling out that card. Before we delve into the service, I got a handful more announcements to bring to your attention. Uh, This evening, uh, we are having our outdoor service at 4.30. I invite you all to attend if you are able. Uh, Please bring a chair. Uh, We'll be eating, uh, we'll be having our service right in the parking lot. And today is World Communion Sunday where with Christians around the world, we are celebrating Christ's gift to us in the bread and the cup. And so we invite you tonight, if you are coming to that service, to bring your own bread and to bring your own cup of some sort of fruit of the vine. And together, socially distanced, but together we will taste and see that the Lord is good. Tonight, 4.30 in the parking lot. Uh, Another thing I want to bring your attention to is that we are not having a Wednesday night prayer service this week. That will continue next week. So see you next Wednesday. On Saturday, October 10th at 3 p.m. in our parking lot, we are going to be hosting a world music concert with some incredible musicians from India. Uh, and I want to invite you all to attend. It's free and you can, we'll be hearing more details about that in the days to come. Uh, Two other things is that we have a diaper drive uh, where we had a food drive a couple months ago. We're now going to have a diaper drive where we're going to ask you if you are able to bring some diaper donations that will go to benefit um, two different organizations, our Syrian refugee ministry here at First Pres and the ministry benefiting bundled blessings here in Evanston. So I invite you all, if you can, to give Donations of diapers on 1017. More details of that to come. And one other thing, just to mark on your calendar, we're planning, seeking through discerning how to effectively do a safe and welcoming trunk or treat uh, in our parking lot on 1025. So I invite you uh, to pray through that and see how you might want to be involved with that. There are no further announcements, so now let us go into the service together, worshiping our Lord who has brought us to this place, wherever we may be in the world, as God's people. God bless you, and have a great service. You are here, moving in our midst, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Working in this place, I worship you, I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. 
the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. As we gather this morning before the Lord and in the presence of each other in our homes and virtually, we acknowledge the ways that we have fallen short of God's wholeness, both individually and as a body of Christ at First Pres. And so we join together in this prayer of confession. Holy and merciful God, in your presence we confess our failure to be what you created us to be. You alone know how often we have sinned in wandering from your ways, in wasting your gifts, in forgetting your love. By your loving mercy, help us to live in your light and abide in your ways. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We offer our own prayers of confession. Friends, hear the good news. Anyone who is in Christ 
is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. In the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Praise be to God. Amen. Hey Thomas, can I play with you? Uh, yep. I really love monster trucks. Yeah. What one can I play with? The green one. Let's play. <clears throat> Thomas, how did you just show Abby that you loved her? Um, um, I'm giving love my, my monster's love. You're right. In the Bible, Jesus says he wants us to show love for our neighbor. What are other ways we can show our neighbors that we love them? We um, can, like, give them food if they're homeless. And, and we, can, we can hug them. We can hug we, them? We can feed them mm -hmm. as much of food we have. Mm-hmm. And show we, kindness. We can give them like we can give them clothes, and we can let them play with us. I love that. And be generous and like share toys. Those are all great ways to show God to Bye. share God's love. Thanks so much, Abby and Thomas and Emily, for reminding us of all the ways that we can share God's love with our neighbor. Right now, we invite you to share God's love with your neighbor by offering one another the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Good morning. In January 1997, I moved to Ethiopia. Though I was to live down country, I spent my first several months in Addis Ababa learning the national language, Amharic. Every day I would walk to language school, and every day I would pass by a group of teenage boys waiting to unload a truck or load another in order to support their families. I got to know these boys over the months, and would regularly meet with them on that corner to drink coffee or tea or to practice my Amharic while trying to teach them a bit of English. These boys looked after me and clearly welcomed me into their daily lives. In fact, I got to know them quite well, yes, as a group, but also as individuals, one by one, because in time, each one invited me into his home to have a meal with whatever family he had. These boys and their families lived in everything from mud huts to tin shacks to a room behind a store, or as in the case of Bellate, in a cement room with a mat and a stool. He lived there by himself because he was an orphan and had no remaining family. And yet, he, like the others, loved me the best he knew how by extending hospitality and offering me a meal, treating me like family. In Ethiopia, one had to pay to go to high school. These boys were trying to earn their school fees and help feed their families, but it was clear they all wanted to go to school. School was a privilege, and it would help them potentially get work in the future. Most couldn't afford it, though, but God made it possible for me to give them small grants of about 30 or $40. Most used it for school, some for other needs. It seemed far too small an amount to make a difference, but it was one way I knew to show my love for them. So you ask, did it make any difference? Well, the reality is that for most of the boys, I have no idea. But about six weeks ago, I received a phone call one morning through Facebook Messenger. And who was it but Bellate, that orphan whose home I had visited in 1997? And with good English, he told me that he had finished school and now is the director of human resources for a company in Ethiopia. Also, he told me he's married with two children. 
And finally and excitedly he said, and now I love Jesus. And then he said, thank you. And proceeded to send me a picture of the note I had written um, so long ago to go with that small gift I had given all those years before. The verse I had quoted in the note, which I didn't remember, was from 2 Corinthians 4.18, and it said, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Do these small acts of love and hospitality that Romans challenges us to do make any difference? We may never know. But what I do know is that God is at work, and I just need to trust him to use that act of love, no matter how small it seems at the time, because he will. May he fill each of us up with his love so that we can all pour ourselves out little by little, trusting God to use it for his eternal purposes. Thank you. Our scripture reading for today is from the Epistle of Paul to the Romans, chapter 12. Please join me in a prayer for illumination. Our Lord God, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us grace to receive your truth in faith and love, that we may be obedient to your will and live always for your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Romans, chapter 12 verses 9 through 13. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, First Prayers. It's great to be with you. The Lord bless you. You know, I was checking, and I, I'm pretty sure about this, that this Sunday, today, is our fourth Sunday in this series called Filled Up and Poured Out. And I hope you're getting excited about it. I hope you are evaluating what are the many ways in which God has poured out his grace upon me? What are the many ways in which I have been blessed by the Lord? Because what God is now expecting from us is that we wouldn't keep the blessing to ourselves, but that we would pour out his blessings on others for the sake of Christ, on others, and for the world. I'm grateful that we're reading today's text, and I have three reasons why I'm grateful that this is the text we're reading on this day. First of all, today is World Communion Sunday. And the focus for me is not so much on the word world or on the word Sunday, even those, those are significant words, but on the word communion. Now, don't get me wrong, the act of sharing the cup, the act of sharing the bread as signs of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ is at the heart of what we do as a Christian community. But I don't want you to miss the important word community, our oneness in Christ with all of our brothers and sisters around the world. You know, the Bible tells us that we must rejoice with those who rejoice, we must weep with those who weep. We, as the church, must live in harmony with one another. Now, those are the things we pour out in community. And so when we share in the Lord's table, I want us to remember our relationship with each other and with Christ, because if we don't, and mainline churches are famous for that, we just go through rituals. We have the form of godliness, but we lack the power. So I want us to put community back in the word communion. But here's the second reason why I'm grateful we're reading this morning's text is that October is National Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Domestic violence, listen to me now, domestic violence is not just a problem that's out there. It's in the church. And it's not just a problem with the people in the pews. It's also rampant among the clergy. 
Domestic violence affects millions, and I mean millions, of men and women of every race, religion, culture, and status. It's not just the punches and the black eyes, and, and listen to me, that's horrible. But it's also the yelling, it's the humiliation, the stalking, the manipulation, the bullying, the coercion, the threats, the isolation. It's the, it's the stealing that person's paycheck. It's the constantly keeping tabs online of what that person is doing. The nonstop texting, the constant use of the silent treatment or calling someone stupid so often that the person actually believes it. And if you are a victim of domestic violence, you'll notice on the screen there is a number that you can call and you can get help and you can find hope. And I would urge you to do that if that's what's happening in your home. And if you're listening to me and you are inflicting violence on people in your life, in your home, around you, at the workplace, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, you gotta stop it. You gotta stop it now. Because domestic violence is the antithesis of everything Romans 12, 9 through 13 is all about. What God is calling us to be and to do, domestic violence is all about power and control. And in the current environment of isolation that is caused by the pandemic and the need for social distancing, Control then is more easily exerted by abusers with fewer and fewer avenues for accountability for their actions. And that's why we've got to be aware of this. Romans 12, 9 through 13 paints a whole different picture. And it calls us not to be a bully, not to be someone who is exploding with anger and inflicting threats and harms, harm on other people but Romans 12, 9 through 13 calls us to genuine love. And so the third reason why I'm grateful for today's reading then, I think what, what Romans 12, 9 through 13 does, it paints this picture of what the world needs to look like through God's eyes. It paints this picture of what God has put within us and what we can pour out into the world, into our life, into our family life, into our community by the power of God. But that hope and that potential for change, of course, it starts with you and with me. And so the coronavirus has drastically changed human behavior around the world. It has exposed gross inequities in our political and our educational and our social systems. And then just this week, I read that the U.S. death toll from COVID-19 surpassed 200,000 people on Tuesday, this past Tuesday. And that just gave me pause, trying to imagine the hundreds of thousands of families who have been grieving over these past six or seven months. And then on Monday, we all heard that the world reached a somber milestone in the coronavirus pandemic where more than a million people world, worldwide have died because of this virus. And then when you add to that this racial pandemic, this year, 2020, has been a horrible year and, and we've had many horrible years in our nation's history where we've seen the, 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 the racism raise its ugly head. But this year has been particularly tough you and I live in a nation that is divided by hate, divided by race, and now more than ever, at least in my time living in this country, we lived in a very polarized America. We're divided by ideology, we're divided by race, we're divided by class, we're even divided by religion. And people then become balkanized isolated, lonely, disconnected. And I'm telling you, this is not God's design for us. And so I want you today to reread Romans 12, read the whole chapter, and just be moved and inspired and encouraged by reading that chapter so that you can begin to catch a vision for what God wants you to do and to be in the world. 
I'm hoping when you reread Romans 12, you will, you will hear this call to a better way to live. And listen, as followers of Jesus, we do not get a pass. We cannot do what others in America are doing today. The word of God calls us to something different. And so look at this scripture with me. Going back to the top of Romans 12, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can discern what is the will of God, the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's what this text is asking us to do. To stop following the world and its craziness, but instead step back and say, God, how do you want me to live in this time? What do you, what do you want me to pour out in this time? And I'm telling you, this text gives you that information. So how might these words, particularly the words in verses 9 through 13, help us? to transform our lives and be different people. Well, what I noticed, and it's only five verses, guys, is that Romans 12, 9 to verse 13 has 13 what I call exhortations or admonitions. Let me share, share them with you again. The first one, number one, let love be genuine. Number two, abhor what is evil. Number three, hold fast to what is good. Number four, love one another with mutual affection. Number five, outdo one another in showing honor. Number six, do not be slothful or lagging in zeal, but be fervent in spirit. Number eight, serve the Lord. Number nine, rejoice in hope. Number 10, be patient in tribulation. Number 11, be constant in prayer. Number 12, contribute to the needs of the saint and number th the saints. And number 13, seek to show hospitality. And earlier in this morning's service, you heard from Carol. And Carol's story is an example of the 13th admonition in the text, seek to show hospitality. Her story helps all of us, doesn't it? Because she wasn't part of some big government think tank trying to shape policy. She wasn't part of some big political party trying to legislate and pass new laws. All she did was show up, share coffee, share meals, show hospitality. She served the Lord and lives were changed. She didn't change the world, but she changed, God used her to change the one person's world. Here's the difficulty that you and I have as we read this text. And I want you to sense the difficulty that we have as we read today's text. We read these words, and we could read them in about 15 seconds. We read these words and we find them overwhelming because there are 13 different admonitions that we're being called to, to, to display. And you say, well, how do I put 13 different admonitions in play? Not only that, but you and I struggle when we read anything, whether it's the Bible or some book, we struggle with knowing how do we integrate what we read into our lives. And so I, I checked it. It took me about three minutes to read chapter 12. And when I got to the end of chapter 12, I can honestly tell you, I didn't think anything shifted in my life. I was still basically the same person with all of my strengths and my weaknesses. So the fact that you read these 13 admonitions in about 15 seconds, I know it's not going to transform our hearts readily and automatically. It's not going to fire us up reading those verses in 15 seconds. It doesn't work that way. Reading texts like this once and very quickly as we do on a Sunday morning has little effect on producing all these beautiful qualities that God is asking us to do. So what are we supposed to do then? What would make these things happen? And so I share with you this quote that you see on your screen from Mother Teresa, and I found it very helpful. And she was an embodiment of this. She said, look, don't look for big things. 
just do small things with great love. The smaller the thing, the greater must be your love. And here's why that's important. I want you then to focus on genuine love because I think the, the other admonitions, the 12 admonitions, if you think about it, they issue from love. That's a problem people have with the Ten Commandments also. They look at the Ten Commandments and they say, how in the world do I perfectly live the commandments? Well, you can't. But here's what God calls us to do. Love God and love your neighbor. And when you look at the Ten Commandments, you discover that the first five are vertical and they point us to loving God. And you look at the other five and they are horizontal and they point us to loving our neighbor. And so when that man, that scribe, that lawyer came to Jesus and said, Jesus, you got to fix this for me. Which is the greatest commandment? And what did Jesus say? The greatest commandment is embodied in love. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. This is the greatest commandment. All the other commandments are dependent on love. And what do we read in 1 Corinthians 13? That if you have the, 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 the ability to speak all kinds of tongues, you have the ability to understand all kinds of mysteries, you have the ability to even give your body to be burned, you have the ability to give all kinds of things away, but then if you don't have love, it amounts to zero, it amounts to nothing. And so... I'm not asking you to go out now and feverishly try to practice those 13 admonitions. What I'm asking you to do is to do small things and to do small things with great love. I think that's what I saw in Carol's story. It's about love. It's about genuine love. And so many of the problems that we're having in our lives and in our homes and in our neighborhoods and in our communities and with our neighbors and with our coworkers stem from our inability to practice love. And so that's why Paul starts with genuine love. And genuine love doesn't put up artificial fronts. Genuine love doesn't dwell on the flaws of others. Genuine love, listen to me now, doesn't crave the praise of men. Genuine love doesn't hide behind a religious facade. Genuine love forgets itself and it looks to Christ and it overflows with joy in him to meet the needs of others. So I urge you this morning, let us look to Christ for everything we need. Allow him to fill us with his love. And it's from that place of love for Christ that we're going to love that person of another race, that person of another religion, that person of another political persuasion. It's genuine love that's going to enable you to live the life that God has called you to live and to, in, and to somehow inject hope into these dark times, to love our neighbor the way we love ourselves. And so this is what love does, my friends. It'll cause us to bless others. Love will empower us to be an anti-racist. Love will cover a multitude of sins so that we are quick to forgive each other. Love never ends. Think about that. So I urge you today, as you seek to love your neighbor, is to live a life of love. Now, there's no way we can do this by ourselves. Otherwise, we will, be being, we will simply be pushing ourselves to do the impossible. But here's how we can do this. We have to invite the power of Jesus, the grace of Jesus into our lives. We have to be willing to admit that, Lord, I've not been a very loving person. I've not been the kind of person you want me to be. Forgive me. Renew me. Infuse your power within me by the power of the Holy Spirit so that I can love genuinely and love my neighbor the way I love myself. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and God's people say, Amen. God bless you. Thank you for your willingness to participate in giving 
here at First Prayers, and even in the act of giving, it requires love. That's the best kind of giving. The Lord first gave us. God so loved the world that he gave. We're asked to do the same. And you'll notice on the screen, there is an opportunity to give by clicking the, the tab on your screen. You can also text the number or you could mail the check in. Either way, God bless you and thank you for sharing your time, your talents, and your resources and doing it with tremendous love for God. Thank you. The Lord Jesus invites us to this table. The scriptures tell us that he will invite people from the north and the south and the east and the west to sit at the table of fellowship with him. And I want to invite you to do that. Wherever you're located, north, south, or west, or even east, to gather your family, to gather those elements in your home representing bread and uh, the fruit of the vine, and join us as we come to the Lord's table. Let us pray. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. You created us in your image and you breathed into each of us as you called our name individually and called us to be your people in unity. You intentionally placed us in the beautiful places in your creation with purpose and with unique diversity, weaving that diversity into a magnificent human tapestry to cover your world. When we broke the beauty of the tapestry with our sinfulness and turned away from you, your unwavering love remained constant. Even to this day, as nations are at war with one another and the devastation of the coronavirus pandemic and racism are threatening to destroy the beauty of your human tapestry, you promise to deliver us from the captivity of our fears, our own destructive behaviors, and the grief and destruction of the distress, pain, and anguish of cruel disease. The covenant you made with us to be our sovereign God gives assurance that your love never leaves us, but calls us into a closer relationship with you and calls us to embrace one another in the human tapestry into which we are all woven. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. And so lead us, Lord. Empower us. Give us the courage to break the boundaries of fear and enter the places where hope is diminished by life-threatening illness. Move us to give generously and to serve unselfishly and to enter places where we must take risks for the sake of Christ. Give us your bold message to enter places to witness to your grace and mercy so that lives are transformed from acts of evil and hatred to movements of love and mercy. On the night in which 
he gave himself up for us, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you and he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, Lord, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And all God's people say, Amen and Amen. And so friends, let us eat together the body of Christ that is broken for us. And let us drink together the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that is shed for the forgiveness of our sins. Would you pray with me? Lord God, we thank you now for the renewal, for the reminder, for the encouragement that we receive when we fellowship with you and with each other at this table. Send us out now, Lord, into this world where the brokenness, the isolation, the racial tension, the violence is great. Use us for your glory. Use us to make a difference. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Thank you. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. And I want to remind you that God has called you. He has poured out his gifts upon you. And a day is coming, friends, when the Lord will ask us, what did you do with the talents that I gave you? And I pray that you won't be one of those who say, I buried it. But you will be one of those who say, Lord, you gave me one gift. And look at what I did with it. You gave me five gifts, ten gifts. Look at what I did with it. And then the Lord will say, well done, good and faithful servant. And that's what I want to hear. That's what I know you want to hear. So I encourage you as we go out into this week to remember these words, that friends, we go nowhere by accident. That wherever we are, God has called us there. And that wherever we find ourselves this week, we must believe that God has put us there. That God who indwells us by the Holy Spirit has something that he wants to do in us and through us right where we are. So go in peace now to love and serve the Lord. Amen.